Good morning, everybody. Good to be together with you on this day, and happy Easter. (laughs) Should we try that again? (laughs) Because just, uh, you know, didn't really feel like you, it was heartfelt. Happy Easter. There, there we go, and happy Easter, those who are joining us by way of our online uh, service. Good to be with you. Shall we, uh, oh, maybe we'll do that later, because I think it's easier to stand and wave than to twist ourselves and, and wave, but we're happy that you're here uh, with us, that you've uh, chosen to worship with Grace Lutheran in Providence Valley Lutheran this morning. Good to be together. Uh, just a few announcements to uh, uh, make before we begin our worship time. Of, of course, we're Always uh, thankful for our ability to share our worship services online and uh, on the radio. Uh, Today's services are in memory of Mackenzie Overlander's birthday on April 17th from Terry and Becky Overlander and their family. And then uh, we want to lift up Terry's family as well upon the death of his mother, Liz Overlander. Uh, She passed away this past week, and so we uh, commend her to God's eternal keeping and and lift uh, Terry's family in prayer this day. Uh, Services for Liz will be held on Friday. Uh, Also give thanks for our bulletins uh, given in memory of Jordy Martinson from his sponsors, John and Jill Storleen. So thank you for uh, uh, helping us worship together and then lifting up your loved ones uh, here at Grace and Providence. Uh, Just want to go through the calendar a little bit with you uh, this morning. I um, want to uh, let you know that the Persevering Love Grief Support uh, Group continues, and the times are listed in uh, the bulletin meeting this week on April 14th at 7 o'clock, and then again on Thursday, April 22nd at 10 a.m. Uh, our women's Bible study is resuming now after a little hiatus uh, from the pandemic, but Emily will be uh, meeting with the women's Bible study on Monday beginning at uh, 2 o'clock. So if that was your practice uh, prior to the pandemic, um, joining for a Bible study, we invite you to come again. And if it wasn't your practice, we invite you to come for the very first time. So 2 o'clock, and they usually meet in Grace Hall um, here at Grace Lutheran. I want to remind you of the spring congregational meeting coming up on on Sunday, April 18th as well, a short meeting right after worship services. And then uh, First Communion this week as well. I I guess I forgot to mention First Communion for our fourth grade class, for those families that uh, choose to have their children uh, go through, move through uh, First Communion, and then gather at the altar for for communion services in May. We'll begin at 3.15 and conclude at 6 o'clock on April 14th. And I guess the best part of that is learning about communion, but you get a little pizza uh, that we throw in as well. So I uh, hope to see many of our fourth graders. If you are planning, I know I've heard from a couple families, but if you are planning on attending, it would be nice if you'd call the church office or just let me know that you'll be there for those, um, for those meeting times. So we lift up some birthdays today. Um, so uh, we, uh, Marlene Lee celebrated a birthday this past week. Uh, Char Laney Uh, usually joins us uh, on our Facebook Live. So, Charlene, is a birthday uh, today. Paisley Martinson has a birthday today. Um, 68, 86, and 12, and you can figure out who goes with with who, how about, all right? Are you going to take the 12, Marlene? I would too, all right. But happy birthday, blessings to you, Marlene, blessings to you, Paisley, and blessings to you, uh, Char, on, on this day. Well, let's uh, uh, stand and we'll uh, first wave to the camera and greet those that are joining us for worship in their homes. Good to be with them as we gather in different rooms. And then if you want to greet those around you today with a peace sign or a hug or an elbow bump or whatever you feel comfortable with. Then we'll turn together for our brief order of confession and forgiveness. Uh, uh, The words are uh, printed for you in your bulletins. They're also uh, printed in the Now the Feast and Celebration booklet that we'll be using for Holy Communion today. And we will be gathering at the altar for communion, but we ask that you come forward in your family units or your social groups, that you stay social distanced with others, and we'll commune at the altar 
uh, this morning. Um, the wine is poured for you, so as you come up, you'll grab a cup with wine already pre-poured. Uh, there's grape juice in the gold trays, and then you'll receive the bread from uh, Pastor Stephanie and I. And uh, for those uh, that require gluten-free, uh, just let us know, and we have that available for you as well. So blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But let us confess our sins to God, who is faithful and just, and has promised to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not trusted you with our whole heart. We have not loved one another as ourselves. In your compassion, forgive us, renew us, lead us, and empower us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. With joy I proclaim to you that Almighty God, who is rich in mercy and abundant in love, forgives you all your sins and grants you newness of life in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Our hymn has been printed for you, Christ is Alive. Let Christians sing. We'll sing the first two verses, the first two verses. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And then we turn to now the feast, uh, singing on pages four and five, our hymn of praise.
our bulletins. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to share the power of your resurrection in all that we say and do through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated. Delane Egemritsen is our lector this morning. Thank you, Delane. The first lesson this morning is from 1 John um, chapter 1, verse 1, through chapter 2, verse 2. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our own eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, connecting the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us and truly, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him... If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours but only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. The psalm this morning is Psalm 123. He is very good and pleasant, it is when, when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon who f falls on the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the second lesson this morning is from Acts 4, verses 32 through 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions. But everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
gospel this morning is according to John, the 20th chapter. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what he had said to her. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed him his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails on his hand and put my finger on the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his, dis his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Peeking from behind a dusty curtain, the world outside looks very much the same. Inside, the upper room is like a tomb. Life has stopped, stolen by grief. Outside, the world has quickly moved on, his miracles and promises cast aside when he died a criminal death. He must be a fraud. Inside, it becomes harder and harder to believe that the past few years, everything he did and taught were real. And the promise and sense of purpose The woman says she's seen him alive just this morning. In the garden where he was buried, she had seen the Lord. He called her by name. But that cannot be right. She must be hysterical over the missing body. He's gone, and everything is different now. Not that long ago, the streets outside were safe. When he was with them, they had a status upgrade. They were recognized, even celebrated, as part of something that made the world better. Then, it didn't matter that they were poor, blue-collar workers, because he chose them. He told them they had worth. He called them to follow him for a richer life. Now, he's dead. It seems as though all the good he did for the people is completely forgotten. And his followers? Now they're fugitives. Was it really only a week ago that the people cheered as they came into town? Now the echo makes a sinister shift as the same people jeer at the disciples and hunt them down. The officials who had him killed are out for blood the blood of his followers. The streets outside are not safe anymore, and so they wait. Can you imagine such? 
This isn't difficult to imagine for many in our country and around the world who live in tortured anxiety and fear choices being made by their governments that don't seem to support what they feel should happen in our world. It's not difficult to imagine for an undocumented member of our society. It's not difficult to imagine for refugees fleeing from foreign homes. They know what it feels like to, be, to seek sanctuary from a government that fears the changes their life might produce. This isn't difficult to imagine for the poor who know what it's like to lose a job and worry whether their life will ever have certainty and comfort again. And yet, Jesus appears. Jesus is there in the midst of fear and worry and doubt. He shows up and he brings peace. In the upper room, Jesus had prepared the disciples for his departure and warned them for his, to look for his return. None of this should be a surprise, and yet, there the disciples all stood dumbfounded, glued to the spot, mouths agape, not believing their eyes. Peace be with you, Jesus says. Peace? What peace? All is chaos and panic, and how can this be? They weren't expecting to see him. They were still mourning his death. All the while, as his disciples bumble and trip over themselves in shock and awe, Jesus stands, arms welcomingly outstretched, as if offering an embrace to a beloved friend. He does not hide his scars from them. The gory holes were openly on display. Holes where nails had pierced his hands and feet just days before to hold him pen to the cross like a common criminal. There was no mistaking that this was the beloved rabbi who had spent the better part of three years gathering, teaching, and loving these people. And yet they were amazed to see him before them. Jesus breaks in to the disciples' despair. He does not rebuke them for getting lost in their grief, but instead shows them his scars and in this way invites them to remember and embrace all of the promises that they thought they had buried with him. As they are awakened to become aware that he's truly there, he offers a message of peace and breathed a new spirit into them just like he said he would not that long ago. They remember. And their spirits, now intermingled with his, are stirred back to life. He says to them, As the Father sends me, so I send you. In this simple command, he pushes the disciples out of their nest, out of the upper room, into the world. Yes, to face the same resistance that he'd met that led to his death, but also to share the same miraculous good news. They remember all that he had taught them and prepared for them and weep no more. For now, they understand that he will always be with them. This account of the disciples' experience, it says, is written down for future generations, for us, in order to teach us the same lessons, to show us the same miracles, to breathe into us the same spirit, to offer us the same peace. Peace to the angst ridden across our world and nation. Peace to the immigrants and refugees. Peace to the poor and downtrodden. And peace to you. And with the peace of the Spirit among us, we too are called and sent to share the good news with the world. So go in peace. Christ is with you. Amen. And we sing together stanzas three through five of our hymn, Christ is Alive, Let Christians Sing.
And then as you're able, I invite you to stand with me as we, with the whole church, confess our faith using the words of our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we bow our heads and hearts together in prayers. So today, O oh God, we're reminded that we too, just like your first disciples, believe, but we also ask you to help our unbelief, because by your holy word we know what people of faith are like. We are reminded of their joy and their trust in you. We are reminded of how they care for one another and reach out to help their brothers and sisters. And we are reminded of how your presence in their lives and your peace conquers all doubts and fears. But also help us in our unbelief. Work strongly in us and conform our lives to the example of Jesus and of all those living with a living faith. And help us to walk in your light and your peace and rejoice in your saving truth. Lord, in your mercy. And gracious God, we recall how the sadness of the disciples and those who followed Jesus was finally turned to joy and, and how their fear was turned to courage by your risen presence. So help us to show your present reality to all those around us who dwell in fear and sadness. And help us and the people of Christ everywhere to bring comfort to those who grieve, strength to those who are ill, and blessings to all in need. We especially pray for those who are suffering physical or em emotional ills with little complaint, that you might bring them your comfort and your grace. And so we lift up to you Clarice Olson and Joe Olson, Jack Flayton, Jim Anderson, Olivia Baldwin, Tom Beals, Ken Club, Monica Kennedy, Brad Matson, Lauren Thone, Patsy Legard, Jack Lewis, Bonnie Westfield, Julie Miron, Mary Schomer, Joey Anderson, Ernest, Marvin Nelson, Pat Saltness, John Lund, Arliss Buer, Dolores Winningstead, Evelyn Lundgren, Madeline and Wilton Gustafson, Linda Tollickson. And we lift up to you the families that are grieving the loss of loved ones, including the families of Don Oxendorf and Jesse Ashling and Liz Overlander. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our nation this morning with its many strengths and with its considerable flaws. Bless the political and community leaders whom we respect and cherish. And what is more difficult for us to ask, we pray for your blessing on those who disappoint us or frustrate us or anger us. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for other nations and their leaders, especially the United Kingdom, as they mourn the loss of Prince Philip and as they grieve with their queen. We pray for our friends and family who love us well and whom we love dearly, in happiness or in grief, in success or failure, in sickness or in health, and what is more difficult, we pray for those that irritate us or have wronged us, our relatives, our neighbors who have failed us, and whom we find life with them difficult. Lord, in your mercy. And we pray for each other gathered here today. We pray for ourselves. Be with us today and in the week ahead. Keep us alert and awake to the signs of your goodness in the world, in people we encounter, in the intimacy of our own lives. Help us to be faithful to you in all we do and grant us your peace so that we may share your peace with one another. Bless us in our work of faith 
in times of doubt, in times of assurance. Lord, in your mercy. And we offer these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. So refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled water of rebirth like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life and make us one risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God now and forever. Amen. Then we do thank you uh, for your offerings uh, to us here at Grace. And if you brought an offering this morning, we invite you to uh, place that offering in uh, the offering uh, plates as you came in this morning or as you as you leave this morning, but receive our gratitude for the support that you give to us for our ministry. We'll uh, sing together our offertory hymn, As the Grains of Wheat, uh, found in our booklets, page 10. As the grains of wheat, once scattered on the hill, were gathered into one to become our bread, So may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. As this cup of blessing is shared within our midst, may we share the presence of your love. As the grains of wheat once scattered on the hill were gathered into one to become our bread. So may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. Let this be a foretaste of all that is to come when all creation shares this feast with you. As the grains of wheat, once scattered on the hill, were gathered into one to become our bread, so may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. Let us pray. Merciful God, everything in heaven and earth belongs to you. We joyfully release what you have entrusted to us. May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you and dedicated to the healing and unity of all creation through Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ who by his death on the cross and glorious resurrection broke the bonds of sin and death and gave life to all creation. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest, bless.
Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. And so we remember together on the night of his betrayal, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, lead us into your kingdom and teach us always to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And you may be seated. We'll sing together the Lamb of God as we prepare our hearts for communion.
Will the congregation please rise? Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. And let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for the blessings of this table. May our lives be made new by these gifts of grace, and may your love be made known through us. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Alleluia, Christ is risen. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia.